Hello, and thank you for joining us. This is Pastor Mike from Leopardsburg Baptist Church, and I want to thank you for being here and listening in. This is our second YouTube video during this coronavirus pandemic, and we're just glad to be able to minister to you today. Uh, this evening, I want to uh, go on to our next uh, part of our series that we've been doing in our morning worship ser services on Sunday. Uh, uh, and these are disciplines of the Christian life. And uh, this message is on Thanksgiving. Uh, really, it's a prerequisite for genuine worship. I don't know how you can worship someone and show someone their value if you're not really thankful for them. And so we need to understand that Thanksgiving is an important aspect of our worship uh, every day every week, every month, every year, and not just on Thanksgiving uh, Day. Uh, when we think of Thanksgiving, oftentimes we think of 1 Thessalonians 5.18, uh, where in, the Bible tells us, In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And uh, we see here that whatever our circumstances are, whatever the conditions are around us, that we really need to give thanks. But I want to really address something different and not just that we should be giving thanks in in every circumstance and everything that we do and all in whatever situation we're in but that we should be giving thanks for everything that that everything in our life is something that we need to be thankful for god for and i know that is a very difficult thing especially in times like this but uh, we're going to be looking at ephesians chapter 5 verses 15 through 21. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 21 is the basis of this message. So if you take some time to turn there, and before we begin, I'm going to go ahead and pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for bringing us here today, for, for being able to minister to others uh, over the YouTube and the internet. Lord, for opening these doors, Lord, I thank you for the trials that you bring in our lives, uh, not because we enjoy them, but because they strengthen us, Lord. They help us to rely more on you. Lord, that uh, they they try our faith and burn away the, the dross and, and the impurities, Lord, so that we can have a pure faith. Lord, we thank you for the trials because they give testimony to others of who you really are, Lord. And we just thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Ephesians 5, 15 through 21 says this, and this is uh, from the King James. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is, and be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thank always for all things unto God and, and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. And so we see from this passage that really we need to understand this and probably understand this in a deeper way. It's something that we all acknowledge oftentimes, but we fail to really uh, live like we know this, and that is that we live in evil times. See, the Bible admonishes us, it encourages us to live, to, to walk circumspectly. It says in verse 15, it says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. It tells us, Walk circumspectly. And that means to be detail-oriented. Be aware of your surroundings. What is going on around you? Uh, when I was in the Marine Corps, we uh, would do field training and, and boot camp and, and otherwise. And we would be going through, like if we're doing night maneuvers or something, and we'd have to walk through uh, a uh, forested area, and we would have to walk circumspe circumspectly. If we were in combat, we had to make sure that we walked, we traveled circumspectly, be aware of everything that's going on around us. Every, every detail, every detail is so important, uh, especially in dangerous times. 
And as Christians, and as people, that's what we live in. We live in dangerous times. It's not just the coronavirus, but it's spiritually speaking, there are dangers all around and we need to be aware of those. And so God tells us to walk circumspectly, walk with, with eyes all around you, absorbing all the details, seeing what is going on around us. Not as fools, but as wise. Not as foolish people who who just see it and, and forget about it, but as wise people who see what's going on and discern what's happening and, and look down the road to see where that path is going to take us. It tells us to redeem the time because the days are evil. We need to make the most of our time here on earth. We don't know how long we have. We don't know what's going to happen. We, we see the danger of this coronavirus going on around us and many people have caused great panic uh, through, through all kinds of speculation. And we know this virus is dangerous. But again, as I said in our, in our last video, you know, this virus is, is just a foreshadowing of what is to come and what has been predicted in the book of Revelation. Uh, but we need to understand that these days are evil. No matter how good things might be, even in the good times, we live in evil days, and so we need to always be aware. You, you cannot let your guard down when you're in combat zone, and unfortunately, we live in a, in a combat zone, spiritually speaking at least, even if it's not physical. We need, to, we need wisdom, this wisdom, this circumspect vision, that is discerned through wisdom, we need that so that we can understand what the will of the Lord is. What is God's will? That's the thing a lot of people ask. Well, what is God's will? People say, Pastor, what's God's will for my life? And my answer is, I don't know. God's not going to tell me his will for your life, but I can tell you what God's will is for you in, in many different areas. Certainly God, God's will is that we pray God's will is that we study, not just read his word, but we study his word and analyze it and see what he's really saying and not just just scan through it like we're a speed reader. Uh, God's, God's will is that we fellowship together. God's will is that we, that we worship together when we can. God's will is that we, that we encourage one another. God's will is that we deal with sin, not just the sin that's out in the world, but the sin that is within our own hearts and with our own within our own church so that we when he comes for the church that God, that Jesus has a pure bride these are things that the bible tells us are his will but what is god's will for you what what job does he want you to have that's for for you to find out from god but you cannot do that without this circumspect living without without obeying what he's already revealed to us and being wise in how we do things. Not only that, here's another thing that's God's will. And that is, God's will is that we be filled with the Spirit, that we be Spirit-filled Christians. And what does that mean? Well, verse 18 says, And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. First, it means to be controlled by the spirit we can be drunk you know wine and alcohol can make us drunk and and what does drunkenness do it really brings out the the inner person who are you truly what uh what does uh, what does mike really believe is it comes out when when drunkenness happens and i don't drink anymore but but it, it, takes an, it takes whatever's inside and brings it out to the forefront. It removes our inhibitions. And, and in a way, it controls us. But God calls us to be controlled by the Spirit, to be filled with the Spirit. Let the Spirit fill us and indwell us and take control of us and, and do what He wants to do with us because that's what He calls us to do. Drunkenness is a sin. It is forbidden, particularly for Christians. But spirit -filled, uh, being spirit-filled is what God requires of us. Uh, verse 19 tells us, Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, 
singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. It tells us that as uh, as we're filled with the Spirit, then what we need to do is we need to speak to each other, to encourage each other. And part of this encouragement is in, in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing music that is worthy of God. Singing music, songs that that, in, that, that not just uh, I know some people believe that all songs have to be songs of praise to God, but, but songs can be very beneficial if they encourage Christians, they encourage people to live rightly before God. And, and not only that, but you know, sometimes we get really shy about singing, and I understand that. I don't have a great voice. Uh, but as a matter of of what God has called me to do, and he doesn't call me to be in my comfort zone as a pastor of the church. And I lead music. And it's a little bit easier in our church because we use lyric videos and and, um, and we have the music, the lyrics on the screen and music playing through the speakers. Uh, and, and there's someone singing with the music, so it makes it a little bit easier for me. But my voice isn't that great. But God doesn't care what my voice sounds like. You know, sometimes we think, you know, that that we have to sing with a, a great voice and sing in great harmony, and yet what God tells us to do, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. This tells us that that what God's looking at is not how we sound, but just like he told uh, Samuel, when Samuel was looking for the next king of Israel, God said, listen, you're looking at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. And God is looking as we sing, not at how good we sound. Now, I like to listen to good music and, and, and somebody who knows how to sing and is, is, has, has a quality voice. But God is looking not for that quality voice, but the quality heart inside. And that comes from being sp uh, filled with the Spirit. Praise and worship really should be a pattern of our lives and that praise and worship uh, is something that stems not just from knowing who God and knowing who he is, though that is certainly a factor, but it stems out of our own hearts of gratitude toward God. Genuine worship really is birth in thanksgiving. Is in verse 20 says giving thanks always for all things unto God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's like our thanks should always go to God first. It's not it, it shouldn't go to my wife first or my children first or my my friend first or the deacons first or or anyone else but my thanks should always first and foremost be to God. And yes, we need to be thankful to all those other people, our pastors and our, our all the, but, but God should always be the primary focus of our gratitude. Who did, who did God, who enabled these people to do things that we're grateful for? It was God. Who, who gave the great singer that great voice? It was God. All these things are things that come from God and so we always need to focus our gratitude towards God first and foremost. But I, I want to point out that though 1 Thessalonians 5.18 tells us in everything give thanks or basically in all circumstances give thanks to God. Ephesians 5 verse 20 tells us giving thanks always for all things. It tells us that every time, at all times, always, we're to give thanks to God, not just in the circumstances we're in, but for the, the circumstances we're in, the, for the things that happen. Our gratitude is, is this wellspring of worship that we're great, grateful for all things and not just the things we perceive as good things. Genuine worship is, is, comes from this gratitude that we have uh, to God for 
not just for who he is, but for what he allows in our lives. And, and I know a lot of people are thinking, well, why should I be thankful for God? Because I'm quarantined at home and I can't go out. I don't, I, I don't even have a job that is considered essential. And because I don't have this job that's considered essential, I can't uh, go out even hardly ever except to, uh, except to uh, go shopping or something. I can't go see my friends. And why should I be thankful for that? Well, you can be thankful for that be for a number of reasons. You can be thankful for that because, because God is allowing you to have your faith tried. To, and, and this reveals to us where our, strength, our faith is strong and where our faith is weak and we need to rely on him more. We can be thankful for God because when, when our, strength, our, our faith is tried and, and people see that, it, it makes them curious about who God really is and gives us the opportunity to share the gospel. I have had lots of opportunity to share the gospel at my job, my other job, not job as a pastor, but my other job. I have a lot of opportunity to share the gospel with people because this coronavirus and people are worried and they're wondering, well, is this the end of the world? You know, how should we be concerned? And, and I have the opportunity to share the grace of God. You know, well, what if I get sick? Can I be thankful? Yes, you can be thankful for God because you're sick because, again, it helps you rely on God more. Sickness and injury is something that, that helps us not just to rely on God more, but also to rely on other believers more. And it's an opportunity to see the grace of God worked out in the church. The hard circumstances of life, when I look back in my past, I see that that these hard circumstances of life are things that have helped me to mature. When I was a when I was a, a young a husband and father, and and uh, I remember I was in Colorado, I was going to a great church, you know, Woodside Baptist Church, and, and I love that church. And and uh, we we're going through a hard time. I'd lost my job; it was my fault. Um, and and I got fired, and I was unemployed for about a month. And and there were things going on, and a lot of people were going through hard times at that time. I remember once uh, the pastor of the church. He got up and he, and he said, "Listen, we have a we have a family that's really struggling, and and we want to take a love offering for them." Didn't tell anyone who the family was. We thought it was someone else, but it turned out it was for us. And 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 God showed His grace to us in the time that I was unemployed, and and giving us the funds we needed not just to survive during that time, but but to thrive. And we had. He gave us abundantly more than we ever expected, more than I would have made if I'd kept my job. Now, I'm not saying, you know, lose your job so God can show you this great abundance, but that's how it worked out in my life in that time. And there are other situations where where God has just shown himself so gracious in my hard times and and seeing that 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 God has allowed me always to have a great support group through the church. And I'd never have known that without the hard times in my life. And so I'm grateful for those things. I'm, you know, I'm not saying I'm always grateful for them, even during those times, but I always learn when I'm not grateful for them during that time that I should have been because that's when God is showing himself most gracious to me. And, and so we, those are times where my worship was probably the most genuine because, because I was so grateful to God for how he worked in my life, even and the difficulties of life. And then finally, and I know if you come to Levittsburg Baptist Church, you're saying, why can't he speak this quickly when we're at church? It's well, it's, it's a little different when you're doing it online. But uh, finally, I, I just want to point out in verse 21 that genuine worship results in humble submission to one another. It says, after he says, giving thanks always for all things unto God, the, and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, he says this, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. And he said, listen, what this submission is all about? This submission is all about taking care of one another. Once you're grateful for not just being in this, uh, not just grateful in the circumstances that you're in, but also grateful for the circumstances you're in, 
then you can say, you know what? I don't need to worry. I can let God take care of me and I'm going to take care of other people. I'm going to submit to them and take care of their needs before I take care of my own. And so as, as believers, we really need to make sure that we're being thankful. That thankfulness, how, how do you tell a thankful full believer? A thankful believer is one who is submitting themselves to others to, to take care of other people and particularly other Christians who are in need instead of just looking back, because it's easy to look back and say, well, you know, they're going through hard times. They must be in sin, and, and all this is just a judgment of God. No, it's not always a judgment of God. Just as Jesus uh, told the, his disciples when when they asked, well, who, why is this person blind for, for, for life be, uh, from birth? Because, is it because of his sin or his parents' sin? Jesus said, no, it's, it's so that God can be glorified. And, you know, why are people going through hard times? Sometimes it's judgment, but sometimes it's just so God can be glorified through, through our growth and our, our trust in him. And, and as, we, as he is glorified in that, we can then also share the grace that he's given to us by giving it to others as well and not judging people because they're going through a hard time and assuming that what they're doing and what they that that they're going through a hard times because of sin in their lives but just say you know what god's been gracious to me and i'm going to be gracious to them because i'm so so thankful for god for what he's done for me and, and i just want to encourage you during these times to just take the time to get a piece of paper get a Get a notebook, get something, and start writing down things that you're grateful for. What are the lessons God's teaching you through these times? And, it, and it, if these circumstances that we have today hadn't happened, would you have learned those lessons? I kind of doubt it. And so be thankful for God, to God for the circumstances, not just in the circumstances, but for the circumstances. Not just in the hard times, but for the hard times. Because he uses those to purify us and cleanse us and show us what we need to be more Christ-like and to be a greater blessing, not just to God, but to other people as well. And I hope you'll take the time this week to, to just create a gratitude journal of what you're thankful to God for. And I think if you started doing that, you'd be surprised how much you start writing. It might take a little while at first, and you write one, two, three, maybe have ten things down, and then after that, it just starts rolling off your pen because there's so much that God has done for us. So I just thank you for listening in. Thank you for sticking through this. And I hope to see you when church begins again. I will have another message on Sunday for you. Thank you, and good night.